how I started investing in property, the traditional investor. I started buying properties the traditional way whereby I was slowly saving money from my salary and once I had enough, I would buy a property. But this was slow and tied up a lot of money. When I first started to invest in property, I was scared of the following. I was scared I was going to buy the wrong type of property. I wasn't sure if it was better to buy a house or a flat. I've been on lots of property training courses and I don't know why, but they always seem to suggest buying houses over and above flats. So when I first started, guess what I decided to buy? A house. I was scared I was going to buy in the wrong area. I wasn't sure if an area was good or bad or how to tell the difference between the two. When I first started to look for investment properties, my main criteria was the price. I was literally looking for the cheapest houses in Birmingham. I decided to invest in Birmingham as I was familiar with the area. I studied at the University of Birmingham for three years and so to a certain extent was familiar with the area. At the time I was living in London and I couldn't afford to buy an investment property there as they were so expensive so I thought and even in Letchworth where I grew up it was a small town and again properties were more expensive when compared with investment areas I had decided to invest in Birmingham like a lot of people that start investing in buy to let I was literally looking for the cheapest properties I could find which looking back wasn't the best idea I did view a couple of properties that were on the outskirts of Birmingham that were really cheap but when I viewed them I had no real idea if the area was good or not. I called the agent, asked if I could view the property, viewed the property and then thought what's next. I did this a few times before I realized I was wasting my time and I was really scared that I was going to buy in a bad area. I'm not really sure what the definition of a bad area is but I guess it's one that doesn't fit your investment objectives. I knew I was looking for reasonably priced properties in Birmingham but I also wanted to have working tenants and families in an area that was desirable and in demand. So I went into a letting agent, I said I was looking to invest in the area and had some questions I was hoping that they could answer and developed a criteria checklist which I still use to this day. I would always speak with at least three different letting agents in the same area to get a good feel for what they were saying and making sure I was hearing the same messages again and again, which gave me confidence when selecting that area for investment purposes. I developed an area checklist and this was off the back of one of my friends asking me why I had decided to invest in that particular area in Birmingham, which I think is a good way to look at it. Imagine your friend asking you the following questions. Why did you decide to invest where you have? I decided to invest in Birmingham as I was familiar with the area. I studied at the University of Birmingham for three years and so to a certain extent was familiar with the area. I decided to focus on Smethwick and Handsworth as I knew the houses were in demand from working tenants and families. The yield in these locations was good and there were lots of developments taking place in the centre of Birmingham which would lead to good capital appreciation in the future. Even in the immediate areas there were new housing developments going up and new New super hospitals in the pipeline. I'd spoken with three letting agents and they had a waiting list of tenants looking in that area and the area had strong rental demand. Once I completed the checklist I was less fearful when it came to investing in the area. Less fearful when it came to finding new investment areas such as central London. I was scared of negotiating with estate agents. I genuinely thought you had to pay what the property had been marketed for and that there was little room if any for any negotiation and even if there was, I felt embarrassed putting in a lower offer. When I first started to put in offers for properties I was interested in, I would usually do this over the phone. I remember my heart would be pounding when I was putting in an offer. I felt nervous and to be honest, I was just scared of what the agent was going to say. These were some of the reactions I had when I first used to put in offers over the phone. Agent, sorry, unfortunately we have had higher offers. Are you able to increase? My usual response on the phone was, uh, let me call you back. Agent, there is no way the vendor would accept that and I would feel embarrassed to put that offer forward. My response, okay, thanks. Agent, I can put your offer forward, but it's not what the vendor is looking for. I thought you were very keen on the property. I mean, I am, I mean, I was, I really like it, but only able to offer the said amount. Over time, I decided to stop offering on the phone. I felt like I was personally insulting the estate agents and owner at the same time and really started to be scared of their responses. When an offer did get rejected, the agent would say, would you like to make a revised offer? 
And on the phone, I would say, yes, sure. Then they would usually ask me how much, and I usually offered another 10,000 pounds, and any subsequent offers were usually increased by the same amount. Over time, I decided to develop a framework when it came to negotiating with estate agents. I would never offer on the phone. I would only ever offer over emails. I would make a call to the agent after viewing and say the following. It works in terms of what we would like to do with it, but only at roughly this level. And I would quote the figure from the negotiation template I had created. And if the agent said they would put the offer forward, then at that point, I would send a formal email with the initial offer amount, including my offer pack. The offer pack I created has become a game changer and it makes me look very professional when presenting my offers as it gives the estate agents everything he needs, again, saving them time and effort. The offer pack I developed is simple yet effective check it out. If my offer was subsequently rejected by the owner, then I would use the negotiation template to progress to my second offer. Using the negotiation template and offer pack together reduced my fear massively, as now all I had to do was follow a process. Previously, I would spend days coming up with the revised offer amounts, and in my own mind, I would be justifying any subsequent increase and trying to justify that to the estate agent. For example, I would say that the property needs a lot of work, and the agent would say the picture and description said it needed a complete refurbishment and you knew that when we spoke on the phone and when you booked the viewing. I would be like, yeah, but okay, thanks. Now I can use a negotiation template to generate the first, second, third and final offer. And also I don't make it personal. For example, I will say that I really like the property and it works for what we are looking to do with it. But my business partner has concerns regarding the area or any other issues identified on the viewing. This is a great way to negotiate as the agent is less likely to take it personally as you have said you like it. 